Welcome to Lifestyles of the Strange and Exotic Random Craft Vlog, which is really hard to say. <laughs> now these are just going to be kind of a little show and tell of sort of private things that I've made. Well, private as in things that I don't recreate to sell. <laughs> so they're pretty much one of a kind items that are just far too much work to be any profit to me whatsoever. <laughs> so <laughs> so that that's what this will be. Now since I'm here in my workshop, this is the first thing which I'm sure I've showed you in either blogs or video, you know, other stuff. And this was just some pieces of cloth that I kind of had left over from various things. And there's no like rhyme or reason, so there's no pattern, but if you see a pattern, good for you. <laughs> Get a little closer here to one of the blocks. This one here was a dress I got for a dollar at I think last year's townwide tag sale dress was nice but it just looked kind of crappy on me and it um the rest of it became a coffin purse which I think I sold no I didn't I think that might still be up there the gunmetal gray one with a cross that's that one this I got at the renaissance fair one year they had I wish I had those sewing skills they make costumes and it was just a basket of scraps for free and there was you know quite a few pieces of, you know, halfway decent cloth. You know, big enough for this type of thing, but nothing that you could make anything major with. This was a... Oh yeah, this was a scrap from my cape that I made to for the Ren Fair. And I got that eons ago. Actually off the bolt, so I don't know, $20 for a couple of yards, and I still have quite a bit of it left. And this was a shirt. I don't know if you can see the rose pattern there. And that became various different bags and this, that, and the other thing. So, it just was cool and, you know, my favorite color is black and red. Now, these things here, I had shown, uh, I think in the Getting to Know Me vid, my purple camouflaged one. Now, this one I got the idea off of the DIY dish every year or every season they do a pin cushion. But this year they haven't uploaded any videos and there are some pretty neat things. It's like a pair of twins and they do different craft things. So I thought it was kind of a neat idea. And I made the little pom-pom... Um, there's some technical term for them, but I stuck them on there. That was kind of nifty. I don't actually stick pins in them though. <laughs> and these ones are on um, candle holders. I don't know if you can see that there. So they're just sort of there lurking. Half the time I forget they're there. This is my thread holder. Coordinated, coordinated. Try that again in English. It's coordinated by color. So it's like greens and then blues and then yellows going horizontally. And I was looking into these things if you bought them. And I'm like, no. Because <laughs> they're really kind of friggin' expensive. Plus they're wood and they're really heavy. And it's just a piece of cardboard and some of the little tiny about pencil with dowels, maybe a little smaller than that, and just glued them in. You know, used the thread and made the circles with the thread and put the dowels in the middle and, what, two, three bucks maybe, if that. <laughs> and it's a lot lighter, say, for the weight of the actual thread, so if you're hanging it on your wall, it's not going to take your wall down. So, that's my ghetto thread holder. And I made this, and this was something I saw online, I think they call it a tomato pin cushion or something like that. And I needed a big pin cushion because you can never have too many pins. Because most of them are usually lost in projects yet to be done. <laughs> and this was just some sort of spare cloth that I, I think I'd gotten at the Goodwill eons ago. And I like the quilt pins. So that was my, my very useful, pretty hefty too. I mean, <laughs> it'd be like one of those mushrooms that uh, you eat like a hamburger. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Here's just a little tidbit here of, <laughs> this was going to be a giant basket, but I never quite finished it. Just some random crap in here. And these are magazine pages rolled up and glued in the circles. You can find a few different ideas for how to make these things on YouTube here. And you just glue them together. I used hot glue, which seems to work pretty good for paper. And it's pretty sturdy, but it gets really, really heavy. So, that's that. 
Plus it takes quite a while too, so I just got lazy. But it's enough to hold my stuff. Plus it also holds up my curtain too for when I do my hauls. Now, this is the Hall of Wonders here. Now, I I have two paintings. Well, paintings, quote unquote. According to Grace, tracing isn't considered painting. Well, it's not really tracing. I mean, I drew all the artwork and then I sort of painted on top of it. I didn't trace anything, so that's why the uh, <laughs> so that's why the castle looks a little bit odd with perspective there. But I hand drew that, and I remember the top one says the limit of art cannot be obtained. And I can't remember what the other two say. The, they actually do say something in hieroglyph, and of course these are just things that interested me. And it was supposed to be something done, something to do about dimension. You had to do something three dimensional. So my asteroid turds are actually kind of. Uh, <laughs> You know, there's there's texture here, and then that was out of a magazine or something, and then the little flags kind of do that. So that was my fascinating painting there. I also made that moon. We had the uh, vocation Bible study, and it was like a space thing. It's like, can you do this stuff? And I'm like, hell yeah. So I, I liked my moon with my, my footprint and flag. <laughs> they have like no room, so I can't quite get the shot. Now this was another thing I had to do in art class. And this wasn't considered art because I had wrote and dream child on it. So it was more like a poster or some dumbass thing. But, you know. Screw you, Mr. Devine. <laughs> but this was just some more stuff. Again, I draw and then paint. Kind of like color within the, you know, drawing. I don't know. That, yeah, basically that's what it is. I draw and then I color it in with paint instead of something else. So I, I drew everything here. I was actually surprised their face came out symmetrically. <laughs> I usually have a problem with that. And the Ankh and the Cardinal, I have no idea why I did that. I don't know. Katana, I don't know. <laughs> I do not remember. This is like last few years of high school. I do not know. But they've been floating around and I still have my sister's weird ass painting in here. <laughs> you look at it too long, things start going weird. Now, this is something I had made that I got inspired by Emily Autumn when she was on Crattress Coast to Coast, the, bat, the um, fairy wings. And I'm like, they don't come out nearly as cool as hers. But I'm like, that's freaking cool. So I made a pair of neat silver little bat wings here. And it's not really a rose, it's just one of those plastic things and I stuffed like that sequin stuff in it. <laughs> There's spideys on the wings. If you can quite tell. But this is one of the other butterflies I did. And I want to say this is a yellow monarch. I can't remember now. And this was, I, I actually took the picture of an actual butterfly and tried to get the, you know, tried to get it to look like a butterfly. I don't know how well I did. Uh, yellow tiger tail or something like that. I don't know. But that's, ouch. <sighs> that one. And it's just acrylic paint on, you know, tights, not tights, but pantyhose material, and I used uh, coat hangers that Dad seems to collect because he has to drag clean his clothing. This is a pair of actual fairy wings, as I'm pretty sure I can't get in frame here. Very narrow, oh. with an actual flower in the middle there. This one, a little more, a little girlish, I don't know. This one, I like the shape of the wings, but I'm not keen on the colors, but then, you know, I make a very lousy girl. I like the dark gem tones, so this is a little too bright and, you know, a little girlish. But it was pretty, and, you know, blank stark walls needed something. At some point, I will fix this. <sighs> this was just a random owl. This is one of the first tests that I used the incense burner holder, you know, hole maker idea that she she mentioned in her video there. I like the shape, regardless of the broken petal there. But <laughs> Some beads. I have a close-up. Some glitter on there. Yeah, just, you know, kind of more of an experimentation on burning holes. <laughs> Which kind of reminds me of like a Klingon bat left. Not, not the most lovely looking thing. It's cool, and it's like not at the same time. I don't know. 
But this is sort of my weapon ring wing ones again and experiment in doing holes. <laughs> so those are my wings there, at least that that ow. Now that this is nothing particularly special as far as, you know, technical stuff, but this was my flower girl's oh, basket there for my wedding. And I wanted flowers they were significant to me because I have forsythia and lily of the valley is my flower and lilac's my favorite flower and the Easter lilies. I wanted like, um, call them either snowball bushes or hide ranges, but that would have just taken over the entire thing, so didn't have those. So it was a very springy thing. And my aunt gave me this stuff. It's like a stretchy um, elastic. And I still have asked those more. This stuff, 90% of what I made for my wedding included this stuff, and it went a long way, and it made for a pretty thing. And then I added some pearls. And this basket I got for, like, 50 cents or something, I think, at the Salvation Army. I just painted it up white, added some more of the ribbon and stuff. Ta-da! All, all this, except the forsythia came from the Dollar Tree. This is one of my coffin purses here that was that I'd been using, but it was too short because I needed to make a long, taller one for my book to fit. And I'll show you that momentarily. And it just has the black and red rose theme with some of the white things. I'm sure has a name that I can't recall it. And this is William. Who was very disappointed he didn't get to go to the Renaissance Fair because it got rained out. And this is William, my my personal bat friend. His three brothers are in my Etsy shop looking for a home. And he's rather sexy and he gets lots of compliments when he's out and about. Now I had put pockets inside of him, but found that it's not <laughs> not a practical thing. It's good if you for like loose change or something like that. But if you're putting stuff in. They always get caught in the pockets and pull and rip the thing. So his brother's just one pocket. I usually make them for myself, and then if they, they're well, I, and I can redo them. I'll make more. So that's William, and he hides there during his off hours. Now I'm a huge ancient Egyptian history type person, and I found this for like, I think it was under a dollar in uh, the Goodwill eons ago, and it was just a cross-stitch thing. And I don't know if you can get it up close, but it's the counted cross stitch. And it's almost sort of kind of accurate. Because <laughs> after a while, the symbols kind of start looking all the same. So I kind of got the idea and then just sort of went my own way after <laughs> a certain amount of time. So that's my King Tut. And this is a character I created. She's sort of my inner me. I can't explain it. Her name's Jean, and she's one I created, drew the picture of her, and there's a few pictures, I actually have a whole book of pictures of her, and there's one that looks the most like what I picture her to look like, and I don't know, I just like the, the, the shape to this, and I didn't have enough light blue, so that's why you kind of have that swirl in the background, and then I had to do like a variegated thing to make up the rest of the colors. So that's, that's that, and that's all counted cross-stitch. And the way I did it, I just, I had a program, and I scanned it into the computer, the picture this is based off of, scanned it into the picture, and it made a cross-stitch program, you know, cross-stitch pattern for it. So that's how I did that. And then the one that looked most like her, I did most of, but have never finished it. So that's Jean. Neighbors are going to think I'm nuts, because I'm, why is she talking to herself? Because I don't want to talk to you. Now this is Gothica, and I think it was a library book that had like different dolls to make, to knit, and the original pattern called for like, you know, pastel colors and stuff. Needless to say, I found that highly unattractive, so I did her my way. And she's a dark fairy, and this was part of a costume that... I wear the coat, and I think I gave my husband the shirt, and that was the necklace that came with it, so went perfect for her. And the doll I 
handmade myself and the outfit I handmade myself, but I used gem tones instead. So that's her little leafy skirt, which was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Ugh. She got little boots on there, but I can't quite pull her out. I don't know if you can see her little shoes there or not. Those are her boots. And those are just feathers I found and just stuck in her hair. <laughs> and I just like the... I just like her hair. <laughs> you know, they didn't specify a nose. Now that's her front. And that's the back. I'll lift up her hair. And those are her wings. I'll try to not to blind you here. Those are the wings. The hair was kind of... Kind of it was easy and challenging at the same time. That's why I do these type of things. It's just a challenge in doing them. But there's no way in hell I'd do these to, like, sell. Because, you know, nobody's that rich and I just don't have the time. Now this, this is a unfinished one here. She's like a princess. At least I got her, like, a skirt anyway. And uh, she has the fake eyes here and some earrings. And... <laughs> She has part of an outfit. It's like a whole lot of layers. She's like a queen or a princess or something like that. But I like the fact that here's the goth all, you know, pro prim and proper and clothed and, you know. And then here's the, you know, stereotypical blonde chick here. Drunken, half naked. <laughs> and this is what you see when you walk in too. So it's like, mm-hmm. Take that stereotype. <laughs> so that's her. And it's the same process to make the hair, but you just cut the loops to make it straight. Now this was, I think, my first butterfly. And Lord help me, I couldn't find any damn orange acrylic paint. So I had to go through like 10 gallons of yellow and red to make the orange. So there's a lot of freaking paint on this one. And the thing too, was it, yeah, well it's because I couldn't find white tights. Or white, you know, the white socks or whatever the hell it was I used I only had the black so I had the you know which was a lot harder to do otherwise I could have painted you know the black easier on the white than it was the orange on the black it just made it a little difficult so so this is my monarch butterfly which I am rather proud of but other than having gallons of orange paint <laughs> that's something I'm going to redo anytime soon and that's it pretty much for my wings and this handsome fellow is named Sky, S-K-Y-E. And he was also out of a book from the library, and I put him on Cut Out and Keep, which is a website for like crafters, and showed the book, and it was really cute. A little aviator bear. And they had a different pattern for like, I think, was it his scarf? Yeah, his scarf and his Holler, I think. It was something a little different, but I couldn't quite figure it out, so I did my own damn thing. I wanted to find a shirt that had, like, an airplane on it, but that's the closest. It was like a onesie from a kid, so I just cut it off to make a t-shirt for him because it fit him. Little, little, is this, no pants on? Yeah, he's got his little aviator pants here. <laughs> and he got his shirt. They didn't make him a shirt. A little aviator jacket and his little aviator goggles here. This is Sky. And his little hat comes off. You can tie his little hat around his <laughs> And his boots are a separate thing, too. He took quite some time. I can't remember, but he's just so darn cute. So I have my own teddy bear. Sitting around forever. And this is sort of an experiment to see how big I can make a coffin purse. Of course, it's covered in cat hair now. This is a bag pack. I might just disassemble the pieces. Whoops. It tips over. But this is a backpack. I did make another one, a special order one, for Curtis. Uh, yeah. Which I think came out a little better. But that's that. And it closes like that. So it's not all that. I mean, it's okay, but I don't know. There's that. So I can resize them. Can't remember quite how I did that though, but I might just disassemble parts of it because it's just sort of sitting here. And the final thing I can think of 
that I can't redo is this. This was my handsome hunk of whiff, my Tribble Weeble. My best bud. Tribble! And this, I can't quite explain. It's like felting, but it's like with a needle, and it's, it's needle felting, I guess is the term. And I just had like that scrap piece of cloth, and I would got it for like two bucks or something like that, and the, at a tag sale, the stuff and the yarn, and yeah, I'm like, yeah, something different to try. And I think I just drew him, and I had the right color yarn, and he has a little black spot there. And you just sort of brush it out, I guess, to make it furry. So that's a picture of my handsome hunk of whiff. I could put Tribble on the bottom, couldn't I? Hmm.